welcome to Oh Brother, a podcast of three brothers trying to figure it all out with your hosts, Brandon, Colin, and Aaron. On this week's show, Sven Sandwich. Welcome. Welcome. Hello. If you could both turn to page one of the script, uh, we can go ahead and get started. Oh, yes. Hold on. Let me ask. <laughs> Yeah, I figured, uh, you know, we've been doing these 114th episode today. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Wowza. Um, Look at that. Look at that. Wow. I decided, you know, we really need to start honing in and making this nice, crisp, like 59 minute sharp episode. So I've gone ahead and just scripted out the whole thing uh, for both of you. You can uh, turn to page. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Sorry, first-time listeners. That's a little joke for you. Uh, that's what guys... <laughs> Call that a deep cut. Uh, long-time <laughs> listeners will still be thoroughly confused, but um, welcome. Uh, Hi. Uh, what's... Uh... <laughs> no, it's been a day. Uh... <laughs> oh, has it now? <laughs> oh, no. I just... I've got this weird... Uh, my At the end of the day, um, and so my throat's tired. I did an interview earlier and I already have a little cough. And so like every little nuance or like slight chuckle sends me into this like coughing fit. Uh, so it's been kind of kind of fun to try and manage that. Uh, I was doing the trying to read stories to the kids earlier and I was like, we got to uh, we got to hold on. Just a bit. <laughs> it was great. Lots of fun. Doing it. I'm drinking lots of water. <clears throat> well. Yes. Uh, good luck. What you need is some vinegar and honey. Uh, I have a recipe. I can send oh. it to you. Okay. I'll have the uh, have the boss in that right <laughs> over. Good. That's what you got to get when you got that sore throat. Uh, <clears throat> oh. Unless, of course, you are uh, catch a little bit earlier and you carry around in your backpack, like me, the unofficial throat lozenge of Oh Brother Podcast, the Grather's Pastilles. Oh, hot dang and hallelujah. The marvelous black currant flavor stews the throat, right? Makes it, uh, keeps you going all day long, oh. right? Boom. Hey, yeah, just how's it going, guys? Stop it. What's that? Uh, <laughs> no, for real, though, I love those yeah. things. They're amazing. Yeah. So you, you can yeah. get some of those, too, for your long interview days, right? There you go. That's, what I, that's really what I need to do. Uh, I spelled lozenge right in the first time. Um, we've good, also been... Man, that is something I could not do. I'll tell you that. No, that Z. <laughs> Uh, I've also also been reviewing uh, more applicants uh, for a job opening that we put for Sedalia. Oh, yeah. And boy, howdy. It is a wild ride. I believe you um, mean a rocking good time. That's what you mean to say. These people definitely have had one um, in their lives. Uh, no, it's really fun to see like how long a sentence can be with no punctuation or capitalization. Um, you have sixth graders applying. That's so crazy. Yeah. I didn't know uh, they could apply for. <laughs> uh, one guy <laughs> said that he was a, um, he was a, a he did a yard waste removal and wedding. And I was extremely confused and Megan was like, I think he meant weeding. And sure enough, he, he was, he would run the weed eater. Uh, for the ah uh, okay, but, I was like, wow, that's. I mean, maybe he does it before weddings. Right? He cleans nope. up beforehand that's to make him nice good. and pretty. I was really trying to go for this, and one, um, one one person said, "Oh, what was I real? Oh, is uh, Sven Sven sandwich?" <laughs> and I was like, "Sven, what is a Sven sandwich?" And let me tell you, there are some very interesting pictures if you try and Google a Sven S V E N. Sandwich. I think I will not. I think you get a bunch of weird, like, frozen stuff. And, like, <laughs> I think this is probably NSFW content. Please do not Google this, listeners. This is not appropriate. No. <clears throat> no. No, it's fine. I mean, they're just weird. Um, but, I mean, you do get <laughs> hits, which I was, like, really thrown off by. Um, but, no, he meant to say even sandwich. He was trying to say, like, and I would do, I would even make, I would even make sandwiches. But he, like, missed several words in there, <clears> and it was Sven's. <laughs> Give me a Sven sandwich. And we also, what, I, what does that possibly have to do? He really took this peanut butter and jelly sandwich question a bit too, too far. He really <laughs> missed the mark oh, here. Oh man, we had one lady who replied to the. So we have a, a long list of questions that people have to ask and answer. And at the end, it's like, how do you make a peanut butter jelly sandwich? 
which is a good question because I want to see creativity. I want to see able them able to articulate well. You want to know their favorite type of jam? I need to uh-huh. know if it's jam, if they say jam or jelly, and I judge them immensely. <laughs> or <And> preserves. Then, <laughs> nobody said preserved yet. Um, or marmalade. Marmalade. Um, I mean, but, mar- yeah, but that's because marmalade is citrus, and the thought of citrus with peanut butter is just atrocious. And I can't even really. <laughs> Can you imagine yeah. orange jelly and peanut butter? Blech. No. <laughs> now I'm interested. I need it. Okay. And you make a strip this one. Write down a note. Hold on. Let me. Okay. All right. Peanut butter. Yeah. Pe- <laughs> peanut butter. We're Okay. We'll have to have a definitive list. We should Pretty do this. Good. Whenever uh, we go to dad's house, we're going to have to get <laughs> all kinds of jams and jellies and marmalades and definitively decide on the best peanut butter and jelly sandwich and the correct methodology for making it. And he will. So we will. Here we go. This is our. <laughs> You'll never want to spec. Um, I'm sure most of them are already in the refrigerator door. We just have to. Yeah, but we want them to be not expired. Mm, I think that's part of the. Time. <laughs> scrape off the top. Um, no. So, so what... start start stocking up on jams and jellies now. Okay, got it. And and this really goes one of three ways. Um, well, previously to this, it was like one of two ways. Usually, when it gets to that question, someone answers with like, "I love this question," and then gives a very good answer. Um, or they give you two sentences and it's like, that's it. And you don't know how to <laughs> no. make a sandwich. We had a third one. We now have three, three ways this can go. Oh no. Um, where the person responds with, I don't know what this has to do with pet care. And, <laughs> and then proceeds to answer the question poorly. I might add, um, and ends it with <laughs> smack them together. Uh, which is smack them together. No, you get jelly everywhere. The most aggressive way I could think to make a sandwich. Like I was like, why would you <laughs> smash it in there? Imagine people like one in each hand and just over your head, bringing them and sl- slamming them together as you in your fi- final move to present the sandwich to somebody. But I, I, to have somebody respond with, what does it have to do with pet care? And the thing is, it has nothing to do with pet care but it has everything to do with you as an employee and how you're going to be able to articulate problems, write out the things that's going on and, uh, and do ridiculous things that clients ask you to do because they do. <laughs> and it's just like, uh, yeah, I was like, Oh, I'm really angry right now. So I'm just going <laughs> to reject you. <laughs> ah, I have the final say. Good grief. <laughs> Oh my goodness! So, uh, it's been it's just so much fun, and I I I enjoy it. What makes it even better is when oh, yes, we can tell how how enjoyable you're finding this whole particular situation. Oh. Aaron, can't you feel the joy just radiating off of Colin right now? Can you do you feel it? All Are you getting it. the joy? All, yeah, all of it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's even better because in um, Indeed has an option where you can have them answer verbal questions. Well, so they have, they have a little prompt, and then they click a button, and they record their their spoken response to it. This is oh, interesting. very, very illuminating. It's not required. I don't. I'm not going to make anybody do that because there are accessibility issues, and people are in different environments and whatever. And I, I, I don't care about that. But boy, howdy, when they do that, oh, it always seals the deal for me to reject them. But- uh, <laughs> ah, man. Oh, when the- <laughs> it's like, well, a it's like it's like um, the, one of the questions is like what, emo- what beyond a paycheck, what motivates you to do a good job? And they, I mean, it's almost nine out of ten times they respond with, "The reason I applied for this job is because I like working with animals. And I'm not really a people person." And then there's a long pause, and then it's done. And I'm like, that didn't <laughs> that didn't answer the question. Didn't answer the question at all um, also you do know that pets are owned by people oh, right so so a huge red flag for us is anytime somebody says uh i don't like people and i'm like wow perfect i know immediately not to hire you because that's not okay <laughs> and yeah, it's a weird thing to say in an um, application process oh right well, they, think, they think it's going to bubble them to the top because they're like oh i'm more of an animal person than a people person I'm like, great, go live with animals in the jungle. I have paying customers that want to give me money. <laughs> yeah, and they want a friendly 
pet care specialist. Yeah, uh-huh. exactly. <laughs> they don't want to be dealing with you. Oh, and then one of them is, um, gosh, what is the other one? It's, um, oh, I just went through this day. It's uh, what, uh, oh, what, what relevant experience do you have for this job? And I always love the ones that it's, it's always like, either they'll say like, I was a kennel tech. I was a groomer. Or you get the people who say, I don't have any pet care experience. But I do have like customer service <laughs> experience, and the people who can spin that and play up their okay. brain is That's always fair. like, like sweet, awesome, <clears throat> great job. Because we, you know, we do have customers. <laughs> customers, I do have those. So it's just interesting, and and it's also infuriating because um, I can tell the people who are not. Um, I can tell the people who are not uh, adapting their. Uh, resume to this job um and one 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 lady even in her resume oh it was so much fun again this is always great and i'll shut up about this because it's annoying um it uh she she forgot to remove the top of it was this template for a uh, uh a resume and at the top of it was like summary or like mission and then the text was like this is where you would insert statements about your future and what you would like to do and how you <laughs> work. In the, she just straight up nice. didn't even change it. So I was like, well, anyway, we are moving along. <laughs> Beautiful. That's a good, oh, good sign right there. Right. Great. Just like, yeah, <laughs> I have high attention to detail and like detail spelled wrong. And you're like, Oh, do you now? <laughs> do do you? Ah, oh, that's great. Yeah, that's yeah, that's fantastic. That's, <laughs> that's all Megan and I do these days. We just send screenshots of the horrible mess of resumes that we get from people. And I'm not like I understand it's hard, but at the same time, it's like you can get help with these. Like you can just look at it. Like just look at it i just oh. no anyway <laughs> so we can add a r- resume checker to our oh brother of uh, fiverr listing right we oh can my God. The- <laughs> okay. put that you out there make a killing. <laughs> actually you probably <laughs> wouldn't because the rate of these people it's like they don't even nobody knows that that's a service that you can have somebody do like oh yo guys just, it's a service you can have people do and i know i know I, I i'm reading a lot of these like i've read over like 300 of these at this point and it's whatever but like it's like staying the number of people that struggle staying in the in the in the same tense of like in like in the same sentence they will go from present tense to past tense talking about a job that they are still doing presently <laughs> like, like, I know. Hey, you know, tense is hard, man. You gotta. Uh... Apparently, <laughs> apparently, for I'll. Oh, I'm gonna breathe and have a drink of water. That's... <laughs> <laughs> but... That is Let's a good good you. plan. Uh, not a lot. Aaron, how you doing? I'm good. Just over here working on some lesson plan stuff. Um, just kind of relaxing. Uh, Shelby's over here too, with vibing. So nice. Um, did some baseball inventory uh, today at school, and kind of put me in a sour mood because there's not a lot to work with. So um, everything was just shoved in a closet. So yes, had our had our school data meeting, and then went straight to that. And I was like, oh, this will be easy, and like open it up for the first time, and it's like, oh. Here's like all of these colored jerseys, like all different colored colors of orange. Huh? Oh, no. And like, oh, look at all these, you know, uh, white jerseys. And they're all like a different like style font or number font. And Perfect. when you ask some of the players, like, oh, this is what we wore last year. Like, OK, well, it looks like we need to buy buy more stuff. How much money do we have in the baseball account? Only $600. Yeah. That'll give us like two shirts. Z- okay, cool. Zero so, dollars probably. <laughs> um we have we have a bucket of baseballs. Um our catcher gear is now outdated. 
Um, it has to be approved by the state, and so we now have to spend money on new catching equipment. Um, oh, really? And, I didn't. I didn't know yeah, this. So, so what? So and, tell me, tell me about catcher gear. Yeah. I'm curious. So I, I don't, I don't have the specs in front of me, but there, there's a certain catching gear that is approved by the state, and if the catching gear doesn't have like a certain mark on it that has like OSHAA like approval, then we can't use it. So all of the catching equipment that we have is outdated. Um, which means oh, if we wow. show up if, if if we show up to a for a game, the officials have to look at our equipment, and if it's if we don't have the right ones, uh, we can we we have to forfeit the game. So, oh. holy cow! Uh, catching, okay, catching equipment is not cheap, so um, <laughs> we we have to now go and look for um, approved catching equipment. Uh, we have plenty of helmets, although they are small. Um, plenty of pants. Of various shade, uh, shades of gray and black and white, um, the the previous coach who was very independently wealthy would just buy equipment, so the school never had to fundraise. So ah, that's now a problem. That he's gone. We're like, oh, we have to fundraise, and kids are like, what's that? And you're like, oh, so um. Yeah, that's a big problem. And same, <laughs> yeah, same kind of thing with 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 softball. I'm looking at some of their equipment, and it's just like, when did you guys update these? And they're like, update. So, <laughs> oh no, oh no. Yeah, um, but no, I'm just going through it. We got a few weeks left, but we got to start doing uh, mid mid year testing. Like I think I think they talked about with the high school, we got map testing. Coming up, or have to getting getting like prepped for it, and then uh, yeah, that'll uh, probably start after. And then um, I have my um, mid mid year testing I have to do, um, so I got to get kids acclimated. Um, we started doing these training things where we have to go and talk to like the principal and our um, I don't even know what she's called. She just like shows up from like some program. And they're like, "Oh, did you do your, um, you know, curriculum map?" I'm like, sorry for that. And so they they showed it to me. The one of the other teachers who taught what I taught last year, he actually made one for everything that I teach. So I've I've been using that. But they're oh, like, nice. "Yeah, you have this." And I was like, "I have <laughs> never heard of that term before. What are you talking mm. about?" And so, is it just like it, your your scope and sequence thing? Just like all the stuff that you do all year, like your calendar? Do you yeah, remember? but it but it it shows like the, the i van, uh, the i do we do they do format. oh okay it shows, yeah, like, yeah. it shows like the standards but it but it also shows like the date of things or how long things should take but it also <laughs> you can also attach resources to it like oh hey i got this from this website or you know you can download this from here and oh, okay. i i printed i printed it off and i have a, a safe copy online so i can be like oh boom i can pull this up so now that i actually like physically see like a timeline wise um it, it's been it's been better um hmm. instead of me just kind of jumping around and, and hitting sporadic um standards but um it, it it's very helpful because in my other school they definitely didn't do this they're like where are you at all right bye like these people actually like sit down and like work with you and be like oh you know by the time we get to here you should be covering this and oh you know you know cover this and then go to this and this was these are these ones are more important on the test than this stuff. So it's actually like helping me and I actually feel more accomplished this year. So it's kinda nice. But That's good. yeah. So I'm I'm it's it's doing better now that I actually like physically see like where I'm supposed to be at. Ah, uh, yes. That is important. So okay. So it's just like your curriculum basically, right? Like God, yes. Basically. How and what and what's okay. All right. That's good. That's good news. Hooray. Yeah. dropping things everything's fine there we go yeah so i'm i'm uh follow-up catcher question just real quick is it it's like every single piece has to be approved or is it like like the chest protector is more important or like the helmet and like the knee pads don't matter do you know from my understanding it has to be the entire like you 
I mean, before you could coach or you could play with like Mitch Matt, like mixed match gear. Now it like the whole set has to be the same. So oh, it has okay. to be like a particular brand and style. Oh, wow. Really? It all has because, to be the same. Because it has to, for, from my understanding, don't quote me on this. Okay. Um, from what I've read and what I've talked about, it ha- it's, it's all safety regulated. Yeah. And so as yeah. far as like equipment, like besides like, you know, taking a literal baseball or softball to the face, you know, might be getting run over by, you know, a, another player or something. So it's about, it's about player safety. Um, so there, there's a particular like mark, not exactly like, it doesn't have to be like, oh, it has to be Nike, but it all has to be like the same unit piece. Yeah, it, it sounds kind of, kind of like whenever they revamp the uh, criteria for like kids' safety seat, and uh, yeah, where it, a that they they only are good for so many years, like you know seven years or whatever for most manufacturers before they get outdated, and then if the if the um, Highway Safety Administration uh, changes the regulations on what it means to be a safe car seat, you <laughs> oh man, you have to chuck out that old one. And repurchase one yeah. that meets those two standards. Oh. Oh, okay. There you go. <clears throat> I did not know this. Uh, yeah. Fun. It seems a bit weird that you have to do uh, that. No. Interesting. Huh. Unaware that you had to th- physically throw away your car seat. <laughs> yeah. And like, have another yeah. one. And like, so ours, um, Lillian's is approach is six years old now. And um that means that I think the manufacturer says it's good to eight, but I can't like so I've got to take a picture. If you can't sell them anywhere, like on marketplace or anything like that, so you really have to donate them or give them to somebody else that you know. And a lot of places uh, that accept donations um won't take used car seats either because they can't guarantee that it hasn't been in a crash. <coughs> Um, because once well, that's true, I suppose. Right, you probably don't want to buy like a used helmet, right? Like exactly, like a bike helmet or something. And so you're kind of in this weird position of like, I like I now have three that we just have sitting around that it's like I don't know what to do with these. <laughs> um, so and I'm sure kind of same thing with the catcher's equipment. Like, there's no way to really now sell that. No one else will buy that because if a and it doesn't meet the regulations. If it doesn't meet regulations for you, it's not going to be regulations for somebody else. So you're, you can't even make a little bit of money back to put towards your next purchase. Yeah, that's crazy. Wonder. Okay, I got it. Idea forming. Ready? We've got to have like uh, a way to like recycle it. Right, like that ship thing that you sent earlier. Right, so there's like a yard, right, that's just full of that stuff that can't be resold, and you have to like get it and try to melt it down and make it into uh, usable plastics. Right? Nah, nah. No, I take the shipyard idea. It'd be nice. Okay, so I think I I think I found one of those things. So for. Um, starting from 2020, high school baseball requires a uh, certified chest protector um, that schools have to have, which that's okay. usually coming like from a like certain thing. Um, NCAA pushed their requirements. Uh, the rules are not in place for youth. Most chest protectors sold in 2018-2019 do not have certification. Uh, Evo. Yeah. Evo Shield uh, has an undershirt that is N O C S A E certified protective plate that will give your old gear longer life. So it kind of details that. So it has to be like a chest protector. Um, okay. looking for like the rural changes, but yeah, so so something like that that like you have to like have to have. Okay. Um, well, that's that's what I was curious about. If it was equipment, if it was like just the chest protector, because like the leg guard things, it's just like whatever like who cares but like yeah. i would figure that the chest protector and perhaps the helmet would be the important bit but yeah i know what you're saying it's like a stamp right like this product meets yeah. the thing like boom it doesn't matter what yeah. brand or whatever it just has to have that stamp of approval mm-hmm. saying that it meets these safety requirements right yeah 
So that's wild. You know, that's the thing that that has to that we have to have. And um, what would happen previously is that this this coach would buy the equipment for the kids and then just like let them take it home. And so we're like looking for all the stuff, and they're like, "Oh yeah, the kids have it." They're like, that's super, why do they have un- that? super unhelpful. <laughs> Yeah, so they they've like designed it themselves and like put like their own stickers and like all the stuff on it. And you're like, for, 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 for shit. so, um, yeah, we have we have to like get those back and be like, these are mine. Like they're not yours. They're the schools. And get yeah, your, we, get we, your we, uh, we alcohol have, swabs and buy, scrub yeah, the stickers we off. Have to buy um, a new, you know, several chest protectors for baseball and softball. So. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, yeah, yeah, not terrible, but time to sell something. Mm-hmm. Wonder what? <laughs> mm-hmm. Telling. Oh, I got it. Tie in uh, assorted sunflower seed flavors. Uh, there you go. You could have them sell sunflower seeds. We know you would buy them. Uh, surely other people would buy them as well. Baseball enthusiasts love sunflower seeds. I reliably have been told this. Um, and so <laughs> it's a great tie in with the sport, right? Look at that. Yeah, so we, we're, we're, we're searching, um, for fundraisers and one of them might be to actually sell like some of the old jerseys. Cause they like, they look cool, but <laughs> they're like, like, so I got, I should have taken pictures of them. I'll probably do that tomorrow. But they like, need to match like, though. Oh man. Yeah, yeah they, they need to match. And it's like, we could probably sell these, but then we just have like some boxes of just like miscellaneous things. Like, well, first of all, we're probably just going to, like, we should just sell these. You'd be like, oh, you want your old jersey? Here. Um, and then. Yeah, well, I bet community I people I mean, would buy that to wear to the games and stuff. You know the, what I mean? Like, the, yeah. The Rogersville Band turned their old uniforms into pillows, didn't they? That's true. I have one. Yes, it is. My, I still my, have my, one. Yeah. yeah. We, so we're, we're looking at fundraisers of like, having to work like an OSU basketball game, like in the concession stand or at like university of Tulsa basketball game, because that's the stands to raise money that way. Oh, nice. Um, Go orange flags. Yeah, we, Woo. <laughs> yeah, but we're, we're also, we also don't have, um, it's not one of those things like with most schools, like there's an overall like athletic budget and like one year, one sport gets like new jerseys or whatever. And then like the next year, something else It's more like, Oh, Hey, you know, Get what you can get, and the the uh, the the money that we get from concessions and um, entry fees, like, will be distributed. So good luck. And so uh, there, there's no like overall athletic fund, so we can't like go to school and ask for money. Yeah. So oh. Like, um. We. Oh, and not... we don't have hats. We have no hats. Um, um, I know that yeah, that yeah, is so, an important baseball feature is the hat yeah, because it's also a, it's also a rule because you have to have quote unquote headgear. Oh, really? Um, yeah. You I mean, I guess to, you have to have a uniformed head, like head piece, not oh. helmet, like hat. Yeah, and which doesn't help because some of our helmets are also multicolored. Like we oh. have like all these oh, black no. helmets and then like a gray with like flames and then like a bunch of foreign helmets. Right, like, what is happening? So, well, I think batting helmets it doesn't matter as much. No, right? but like with, I mean, it, it's supposed to like look. Like we're supposed to look like a team, not like yeah, like we misfit. You know, people like we think we know what baseball is. Well, you can just get some spray, just get some black spray paint, and uh, yeah, boom. <laughs> you got it. Because like, like I've I've seen I've seen pictures of like the last few years, and it's like who let this like youth team onto the baseball field like, oh, no, that's us. and you're like wow everybody oh, no. has something different and you know so we need yeah six hundred dollars is not going to buy you know 20 some odd hats or 30 or however we need so yeah we, we have no hats so oh, boy. we need those uh so yes it's <laughs> yeah so eek i'm fine i'm fine it, so okay question Follow up question. I have lots of follow up questions. I've never really thought this extensively about baseball uniforms before. Yeah, mm-hmm. are hats a thing that you have to buy every year? Because so, I would think the player yeah. would buy the hat and then like 
or something, and then that's just like their hat now because I can't imagine you like giving it back. No, so you you are correct. So the, okay. the biggest thing. So what what schools are are supposed to do is that they they buy hats and then they buy like um on. Um, they buy these hats, and then the kids do keep the hat. Now, um, what they, like, yeah, and, and then they keep those hats for good, but usually there are some left over to start next season. Oh, okay. Because, yeah, you have what, the what, same, what like, they, style all the time. Okay, okay, okay. This makes yeah. sense. Um, and so what, what they typically did was just, like, buy a few and then just like start giving them out to people but i think the last few years the kids actually paid like twenty dollars per hat and then they just got some and hmm. like the kids got their own personalized hat but a lot of those kids from the last few years are you know graduated and so there's like a like a small handful of of kids left that have those hats and so we're like ah neat so yeah we gotta we gotta look at at hats but the the main the, the worst thing is is when you order something either if you use like different kind of like companies to like order these um due to covid the you they they take like a really long time uh we ordered stuff for football at the beginning of the year and we still haven't got them like we ordered like Ooh. those helmet stickers helmet stickers and don't have them wow and that was we ordered them like before season. Now we we've gotten some things like we've ordered weights and we got those weights, but like there's little things and it's not ever guaranteed like if we can actually like get those in time. So it's like a little sketch and a little bit concerning of like, hey, if we order these, will we like get these in time? And they're like, uh. So um, <laughs> oh, although we need our order problem. now and like yeah. like hope for the best. So we'll see. Mm. Yikes! Yeah, so this is this is fun. We're fine. <laughs> we are fine. We're... But yeah, that, that's been that's been what my uh, the last you know few hours have been go through a meeting, and then it's like, oh, what do we got? And then like, there's a tiny little closet just crammed full of like all of these equipment and that we can't use half of it. So. Well, <laughs> that's, that's not very exciting. I'm sorry. Yep. <laughs> Your yeah. Baseball Ta-da! initial outing has been so traumatic and horrid. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. We're doing okay. <laughs> oh man. Well, hopefully we get better. Hopefully we can find some helmets be good. Uh, the- mm-hmm. <laughs> Man. So, yep. What, what's, um, what's been new with you, Brandon? Uh, not a lot, really. This week's been kind of weird. Like, like I said, we were, we ended the last week, uh, before break on like a weird spot. So it's just been kind of like, Oh, we're just reviewing some stuff. And, mm getting ready to move on to our next thing and quiz tomorrow. Everyone's favorite quiz tomorrow. Yay. We'll have quizzes. Uh, (laughs) But it was pretty uneventful on the old work front here. Haven't really had to do much dreading things like I got an email today about staff holiday party. Oh, it? I, I think right. it's mandatory. I don't think Gross. it's. I don't think. I don't. I did not oh, get the man. impression. I did not get the impression this was optional attendance. Right? Like I. Don't, Ew. Sorry. I know. Uh, and it's like, <clears throat> I was trying to explain this to Susan on the way home. Uh, like it's they're doing the white elephant gift exchange, right? Oh. Which. <clears throat> to me is quite possibly the most useless thing just in the world. Okay. Like I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand how this is fun. I don't like it. I don't get the point. Right. So 
for listeners unfamiliar with this concept, first of all, lucky you. Second of all, the White Elephant Gift Exchange, I don't think it has other names probably, but that's what it's referred That's the only thing I've ever heard it called. Um, you, you bring a present to the party. Yes. You put uh-huh. present in a pile. And then you draw numbers from a hat. Uh, and then starting at one and going through however many people you have, you just pick a present from the pile, whichever one you want. Uh, generally, you're not allowed to pick the one that you brought. That's like a rule. Uh, mm-hmm. And then you, you just pick a present. Um, and it goes on. Now, the person that goes after you has an option to either steal the present that you had. You're supposed to open your present, by the way. That's important to this story. Uh, or get one out of the pile themselves. <clears throat> and this takes 150 years to accomplish. Uh, apparently, it's humorous. I don't, I don't know. People laugh. There's mirth involved. Apparently, stealing things is fun i don't really know um and yeah and it it generally people bring the most random things imaginable to the gift exchange Mm -hmm. and so generally so the reason one of the reasons i think this is just a waste of time is because now i have to buy a thing right that potentially nobody actually wants and I have no. to put it in a pile, and then I have to get out of this pile a thing that I most definitely don't want, right? Because it's going to be like, they're usually like gag gifts or like silly things. They're like, ha ha ha, I clean up my desk drawer and here's a bunch of junk. And ba-. Like, mm-hmm. I don't, what do I do with this? <clears throat> like what? Why is this here? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> so I don't. I'm, I, I'm the same way. We were invited to one and uh recently and Megan was like oh we're gonna go like right and i was like no like why why would we that sounds i i i can't stand them because it is a complete waste of time money effort i've never enjoyed them um that you get stuck with you know basically sometimes literal trash i mean yeah Um, usually i throw it away right yeah where people bring something where they like like they wrap a to- a roll of toilet paper and you're like gee thanks yeah i'm i don't need this uh or like a fork or like something where you're just like what this isn't funny i'm not enjoying this and then yeah i just like i just want it to get over with and i've never had fun doing it and i i, I was like well that's weird like, really <laughs> I, I okay <laughs> yeah i don't like it i don't I don't I don't enjoy it at all. So that's something I have to look forward to. Yay. Hooray. Uh what I might do is just go through my cabinets at work and if there's anything in there like that I Ooh, don't like know what it is. Chemicals? I'm like, uh no, like uh, yes, here's here's uh two two containers of salt, uh some cooking oil, uh, you know, uh some yarn and tape. Boom, here you go. I mean, sounds good to me. Yeah, right. It's exciting. <laughs> I think that is right. exactly what you need to do. But like, that's what I want to do. If I play this right and I get stuck with something, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick it in my cabinet. And if we do a, another one next year, I'm just going to bring that thing back to the wall. Oh. <laughs> Perfect, and just re-gift the same thing over and over and over. Yeah, again. but I have to get, I have to start this process off with something. Well, yeah, right. Yeah. That's the problem. I don't know if I have a starting implement. Mm. Mm. Right. So I have to find a starter, a starter kit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes, it's all right. So. That's basically it. It's holiday time that I'm grumpy about <laughs> staff tell. parties because I don't want to go to them. I don't like. Ah. Too much socializing for me. I don't want. I just want. If you want to have a staff party in which there are like refreshments and cookies, boom. That's fine. That's all I want. I don't yeah. want 
random present, right? I don't. I mean, don't want like junky thing, right? I don't want that. So, I don't know. I'm not looking forward to this. <laughs> uh, that's about it, though. I'm not really doing anything very exciting. Just trying to figure out. This week is basically like, what were we doing? Oh, yeah. Like, we're almost done with several things. So, trying to just wrap up one thing and so we can go on to our next stuff. So, like, transitional time, pretty much, is all it is. Mm. <clears throat> so, nothing just super interesting on the work front. However, on the random things I have discovered this week, <clears throat> it's time. I have found a YouTube channel that uh, it appears that its sole purpose is to give Colin anxiety. Oh, oh, <laughs> the more I watch it and the more I think about it, it's, okay. it's, it's one I'm, job. Okay. I'm not linking to this in this. Story. Oh, you are. I'm giving it to you. So, so big, I think, so I, I believe uh -huh. the YouTube algorithm has recommended this to me because I have been watching ghost town boy videos, right? Okay. So <laughs> the, uh, ghost town living videos. I've been watching a bunch of those still. Yeah. Because I'm just endlessly fascinated by this guy and his desire to live in an abandoned ghost town and do things. <laughs> it's just like, I'm just, I'm sucked in wholeheartedly, right? But I have found this other channel, right? Uh, he goes by his name, he goes by the name Shy, right? He spells it weirdly, but uh, I'll send that to you in a minute. But um, his videos are like, I'm watching some of the back catalog. So they start out real weird. So he lives in like, at least he used to live in Lithuania or something. So he's a European guy. Okay. <clears throat> and what he does, his YouTube videos are basically just like him, uh, exploring abandoned buildings. Ugh. Um, sometimes not so abandoned buildings turns out. Whoops. Uh, <laughs> uh he enjoys, Climbing on top of very high things, like we're talking like abandoned factory smokestacks, Ooh. right? Like roofs, uh, giant like radio towers, right? This is the kind of stuff he does. What? <laughs> yeah, Ow. right. Uh, and he, uh, the the latest ones, the more recent videos on his channel are uh, a lots of freight train hopping. Oh, right. So like <laughs> full blown like uh. 1930s hobo style hopping freight trains and wow. uh, like traveling across countries or like lots of countries at once uh, by illegally hopping on freight trains sometimes oh. with accomplices oh uh, and it's fascinating right <laughs> yes because okay. I think so like I have I kind of understand some of this urge right not like all of it because he's a little bit uh, intense sometimes but like, like i think like we talked about that thing that fascinates me about the ghost town is like the exploration aspect of like sure. yo what's over there yeah oh hey what's over there like, and that's kind of what this guy does in like abandoned steel factories <laughs> 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 right you're yeah. like oh i'm gonna go look over there what's this i'm gonna go over there i'm gonna go check this out what's that up there i'm gonna climb mm -hmm. on it right like yeah it's kind of that same same thing right like, oh, but instead of like, oh, what's in this mine? It's like, hey, I found an abandoned underground bunker from the Cold War. Like, wow. holy cow, right? Like, or I'm in this like, I don't remember, he was in one building. It was like some sort of like old print shop, but like pre-digital print shop. So like the basement was like a machine shop. They were making parts and stuff for the printers upstairs. And like all the stuff is just there. Mm. right these these cool. buildings that like were abandoned and then they just left all the junk in it yeah there's even a couple where like the electricity is still on and so he's Ooh. like uh this is now infinitely creepier because i think nobody's here <laughs> right but like so <laughs> but also they could be here i don't know I have, right no, in schrodinger's village or <laughs> building uh it is both occupied and unoccupied at the same time. <laughs> that is true, right? That is very true. Uh, uh, speaking of villages, uh, there are also two short series in which he uh, illegally travels into Chernobyl. Yes. 
what? Into the town of Pripyat. And he's like <laughs> scoping Whoa. out these buildings. <laughs> wow. Yeah, man. Okay. It's that. so, <laughs> it's kind of intense, right? Sometimes you're watching it and you're like, I'm holding my breath. Whoops. Breathe. <laughs> yeah. Because you're like in an irradiated city and there's security guards literally over there. And he's like uh-huh. sneaking in these apartment buildings, like being on the roof of an abandoned Soviet era apartment building. <laughs> so how, wait, how did he, how did he get in? Uh, sneakily. Okay. <laughs> Basically he had, so in the one video, it's like him and a guide and like some other random dude, I guess they like have somebody drive them to the edge of the exclusion zone. And then oh. they just walk in. Oh, oh through like super secret back ways sure. avoiding like the red forest areas and like certain known hot spots <laughs> where the radiation spikes like through the me- the roof right wow. they had a Geiger counter with them right oh, oh. and so they'd turn it on every once in a while and be like nope nope not here we gotta go <laughs> like, <laughs> do, 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 do. it would just be like screaming and it would be like wow. you're registering these stupid high numbers but then you know they're over to some other place and it's like this is the same radiation that it was in like Kiev so it's fine I guess like <laughs> yeah. wow that's wild so it's it is wild like I'm, I think I have the first, again, this is why I watched the Chernobyl one first, because I was like, what? Yeah. Because, again, that's just an infinitely fascinating thing. Like, abandoned things are interesting, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> and so, that one got me. And then, like, the freight train hopping was, like, a bonus. I was like, that's just nuts, right? Like, that's crazy. It's just like, yeah, I'm just going to go uh, hop a train and cross the German border illegally on a freight train. Like, yeah, I could. Well, that's a plan. Uh, that's a- <laughs> so what's this? What's uh, what is Shy's uh, background? Uh, do you know? Like, No. Uh, all of his videos, he is uh, masked, right? Oh. Probably because a lot of the activity is illegal. Mildly right? illegal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, so like I don't really know anything else about him. I know he's like a younger guy. He also does like music Right, but that because he there's a couple things on there that are that, but that's I don't really know anything else about oh. the guy. Uh, I haven't looked into anything else like specifically. Yeah. I just watch his videos of him, like, and his early videos are weird because it's like you can tell it's just like something he started doing in the city he lived in because this is like him, like, walking across a rooftop, sure, and it's like a residential area, <clears throat> and again, this is like northern european city so all the buildings are like jam close together so he like shimmies up on some drain pipe or like an actual service ladder and he's just like on the roof walking around do to do you know parkouring about yeah. and then it's like escalates to like oh that's a really tall building <laughs> that's a radio tower <laughs> that's an abandoned factory like yeah that's the <laughs> well yeah cause... I guess I guess at some point, yeah, you you do kind of have to just start because you can't be be a bit boring to always explore the same kind of places, uh, and you kind of run yeah. out of them after a little while. So uh, you got to sit up again. Yeah, yeah, broaden your horizons, right? Yeah, like so oh, what's in here? And yeah, yeah. Oh, oh radiation. that's what you <laughs> cool. The radiation one's a big big escalation, right? Like you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've been watching that. It's a, uh, it's nuts, but it's also endlessly fascinating. Because, like I said, I get that urge to be like, "Yeah, what's over there?" Right? <laughs> I wonder what that is. Like, you want to check it out. You know what I mean? Like oh, yeah. <clears throat> that I, urge to explore, and, like, look at what's going on over there. Sometimes you like really want to go in there, but like my brain goes, "No, don't go in there. You're gonna be." <laughs> Where his is like. Yeah, I'm going. Like, well, anyway, yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. my brain is screaming at me, don't do that. And his yeah. is like, yeah, it'll be fine. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely think that that is a, um, yeah, I have that same sense. I love going into old buildings and 
um, or just walking around even uh, and just trying like just trying doors right like what like what I need to see is this door locked is this door unlocked not I'm going to necessarily open a door if it's unlocked but you know at least I'll know but yeah no I do that too like if you're in a building and you're just like hmm what's this I want to see yeah. right like I do that like I'm like huh what's this what's over there like yeah I definitely do that I uh, do the same thing. So like sometimes if it opens, I'll like peek in. I'll be like, oh, look at what's that? Look, not gonna rummage or anything, but you know, I may. Uh... Yeah, normally you're just normally it's like oh, that's a closet, but like sometimes you're like yeah, oh yeah, that's cool. I wonder what's in there, yeah. right? So just uh, imagine doing that in an abandoned steel mill, mm, mm, right? Or not? Uh, I think <laughs> I think that'd be cool, right? I like you know some of the things like yeah. So it's almost like. It, it's really weird because it's it, like the way that he behaves. It's basically like a real life like video game, right? Mm-hmm. If you're playing like a big giant open world video game, you can literally just go over there and do stuff, right? Because you go, what is that building? I don't know. I'm going to go in it. Boom. But he just does that in like real life. <laughs> a lot. It's crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's what he does. Um, and it's just like, oh, hey. Yeah, I found like this video was called "Found Hundreds of Vehicles in Abandoned," uh, like Soviet thing, right? There's just like, and the thumbnail is just like a ton of buses and vans just in this warehouse. You're like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> it's nuts. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's wild. So, yeah, that's what I've been doing this week. This is the thing. Uh, that I've been watching. And what's the name of it? it is his uh, YouTube channel again? Uh, it's, it's just it's just his name, Shy, but it's spelled S H I E Y. Oh, yeah. The there first it is Shy Chernobyl. <laughs> yep. There you go. That's him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are adding it to the show notes. So there you go. Freaked out as well. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I've been doing. Just endlessly fascinated by this. Huh. This guy and him being like, yeah, I'm just going to go check this out. I'm going to go check. Because I told this to Susan. I was like, yeah, I get that urge. Sometimes. I understand. Like, I want to go like explore buildings. And she's like, what? Why? Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. Wait a minute. We need to talk. <laughs> <clears throat> no, because sometimes you see like a old random warehouse or whatever. And you're like, oh, yeah, I wonder what's in that. Right. Oh, I wish yeah. I could go in there. Yeah. No, there's there's uh, several. I mean, just abandoned buildings here. Um, that uh, I would love to go into. There's one in downtown that they're completely renovating and rehabbing, like whole cloth. That I think would be so cool to go rummage around in. And yes, I'll say rummage because, yeah, I would love your that. grandmother taught you well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, but um, they're cordoned off and they're owned by somebody else. So I'm not going to go snooping around, especially with gopro or whatever uh, yeah <laughs> but yeah i mean i did that we were going the other day we were going to thanksgiving at susan's uh, nephew's house right and our uh. our google maps took us like the straightest way possible so like we went on these like random farm roads that were like what why are we here right <laughs> but one of the things we passed was just like it was like some it looked like some kind of like old like corner country store thing and it was just like completely boarded it up and my first thought literally was oh i wanted to go in there so bad like oh, the store <laughs> yeah there? right like they leave behind yeah i know i just want to oh. see what's in that i just want to see what's in there it's like oh man that'd be so cool to be in there right like so i understand that urge right i get it because i have that same urge sometimes i just don't do it because i'm too scared i guess i guess that's really what it boils down to so i'm afraid of the, the police coming yeah. right you know yeah <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty good, pretty good uh, uh, motiv- motivating factor. For sure. yeah. And one, one of the reasons is I am no longer fast. So like that would be, <laughs> I don't know. You've got the, you've got the, the, the miscreant bicycle now. So you really, I mean, that's true. The, 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 the hoodlum, the, the hoodlum, hoodlum bicycle, place. obviously. Yeah. Uh, but the, <laughs> 
Or not. Uh, yeah, but you obviously can't take that because it's literally the only one in town. Very easily identifiable. That's a problem. You know, I can't do that. that is fair. Good point. Good point. <laughs> they, may, they may figure that one out uh, sooner rather than later. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, so you should check one of those out, Colin. Okay. I want to see you. I want you to watch one. And, I'll, I'll send uh, you the graph of my heart rate from my watch as I'm watch as I'm, I'm. Yo, okay, for real, the it's exacerbated when he's like really up high on a building. Mm-hmm. He will like jump up and he'll stand like right on the edge, oh, right? What? But so that's bad enough as it is. But the fact that he's wearing a GoPro on his head. That mm. wide angle lens of the GoPro really exaggerates the angle, sure. <laughs> right? And so sometimes you're like, no, nah, no. <laughs> what are we doing? You're watching it. You're like, oh, that's really cool. Wow, that's really neat. Yeah, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Just because the, the angle that the lens shoots, like it makes it look like he's really leaning over the edge when oh. I don't think he probably is uh, all the time. But like sometimes it really looks like he's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't like those those really super wide angle shot. Uh, some of those GoPros, so they just <laughs> they get, yeah, they're kind of weird. But mm. yeah, and I mean they're fine for like close up action, which is what they're designed for, right? But when you're like a hundred feet on top of a building and it's looking down, it's like, no, boy, no. How about no? <laughs> Never mind. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> uh. So yeah, I want to see, want to hear a reaction to that. That could be interesting. Okay, <laughs> I'll add that to my my to do list. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. With that. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll probably need to do that. Oh, I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to do that after my Friday interviews or at light or before i'm interviewing we're interviewing uh doing phone interviews for people for the position yeah um, i have six scheduled for friday <clears throat> okay i think i think I'm, i think i'm gonna do it before to get me pumped up so i can really up, i don't know up. maybe you want to do it after if they go badly you want to do it after so that you can like unwind and just like let your brain go somewhere else horrifying of watching a dude on top of a building in Chernobyl, right? Just like, See, no, I think I need to come in with a sort of manic energy to to really drive <laughs> the interview and really throw people off. If I'm like, so what if? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, okay, uh, yes, really, with your like nervous, angsty, scared, the hyper energy. Like, I'm sure that would just be wonderful for the people being interviewed. They're gonna be like, oh, this guy's great and totally normal and wonderful. <laughs> So if there's like a door to like an open rooftop, like that's not something like you would open, right? Like that were like really like let's just be very real. You wouldn't open that door, right? If <laughs> we don't open doors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, I had <laughs> oh I uh was taking care of a uh twelve year old uh chihuahua named Will, <laughs> excuse me, why I die? Named Wilbur. Ah, uh, uh, yes. His his mom was very uh, nervous to leave him alone. Uh, understandably so. Family and uh, except she had a camera in the living room and was actively texting me about things while I was there. She was watching me with her dog, and this is this is this is an uncomfortable feeling uh, to say. Uh, yeah, right. Like it's okay. and not something that I was like. Oh, this makes me feel good. This is a good feeling that I have right now, and I really appreciate everything that's happening. Uh, and it was. <laughs> Definitely one of those times where um, I, I talk to myself a lot whenever I'm in people's homes, uh, just in case they do have cameras, so they can know where they're like, why is Colin uh, opening every cabinet door? And that way they can listen to the sound of me going, oh, where would be the spoons? Where, if Wilbur, if you were here, 
if you were a spoon, where would you be? Because I just want to give context. And I don't know, but it, it's what I do. Um, <laughs> so they're not like, what's he trying to steal out of my cabinet? Exactly. So this time I was even more like talking about like, okay, we're going to stand up and we're going to go outside for a little bit and go to the bathroom for a second time before I leave. Let's go. And like was really playing up conversation. So I'm sure she totally thought that I was just like, just, that insane because of the amount of talking I was doing and being like, and after that, then we're going to go do this and blah, blah, blah. Oh. But she'd text me about something be like, oh, yeah, he doesn't usually like this or whatever. And then I would just respond verbally because I'm not texting back to you because you're watching me. <laughs> like, you yeah, hear right. Me, hear me. It's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's crazy. Man, like, yeah, I can't imagine. It's like knowing somebody's staring at you while you're wandering around trying to feed their dog. That's actively. It's, yeah. That's, man. That's, I'm trying to be, you know, trying to be natural, but also it's weird. And but also, you're like, careful. Don't touch anything. Don't knock over the don't candlesticks. Don't weird. like. <laughs> yeah. But also, it's a, like a 12 year old chihuahua. Not the most active dog in the world and he's a little nervous and a little scared of me so and probably super grumpy because he's a chihuahua Chihuahua. there's not a lot for me to do with him um he goes out and he would like poop pee immediately and then turn around and want back inside so it's like oh let's stretch this stretch it like everything that i did was like i'm gonna walk very purposefully and a little bit slower than I normally do to eat up time. <laughs> oh. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. See, there you go. It's <laughs> oh, but just that the whole looking behind closed door things reminded me of the, oh yeah, I was watched for literal hours at a time this past weekend. <laughs> That's crazy. I had a no, that's a little that's a little intense, man. Like what yeah. this is like the owner having separation anxiety, not the dog, right? Oh, no. Like the... straight up. It, that's what it was. Uh where she was and she even admitted as such. She was like, Yeah, I guess I didn't realize how much I'd miss him being away from him and whatever. Cause this is the first time like she'd had him all through through college and then she got married and now they're gonna have their first kid and they were traveling all the way across the country to go see family for Thanksgiving. And so she's like really nervous about leaving him and she's used to travel with him, but it just didn't really work out this time. And he's older and she wants to yeah. be home and stuff. And he, yeah. He probably is not into traveling now. These older no. dog. He's like, Nope, stay in here. Get out. <laughs> I'm happy about that guy. So, so it's like, I get, I get it. Like this is the first time you have been away from him in four years or more. So yeah, a big deal. But also, like, come on. <laughs> and she, <laughs> Calm down. It's fine. fine. I'm and a pro, it, man. I think she had it on um, motion detection. So it was, she would just get pinged of like, she wasn't like actively just sitting there staring at him all the time. Like, yeah. But like when you came in, it was like, ding, like, oh, yeah. hey, there's a, here's yeah. somebody. And then she would just start watching it. Like it was like, ooh, my favorite show's on. What's the pet sitter doing with my dog? Oh, jeez. <laughs> so it'll be I think I've just said I'm gonna I'll watch it I'll watch that show afterward because I, I think that I'll need to explore a new type of insanity after talking with some of these people yeah and, uh, the one I definitely saved the one for there's one called like train hopping across Europe where they go to like five or six different countries yeah. and like the I think it's the Italian Austrian border they they get caught oh. right and they just have to run like they, <laughs> there's 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 three of them there's three dudes right and they're in this train car and they're trying to like sneak out uh but they got spotted right and they like radioed the yard ahead and they uh <laughs> so they're in there like all right all right when are we gonna get out what are we gonna get out and a dude sees them and they're just like run and they just like bolt and they, there's like a chase. They have to like escape from the rail yard, and they go up and like run up this mountain and hide in the forest to like get away 
<laughs> the people chasing him. <laughs> What's the plan? Like, what? You're in a different country. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> This will be, this will be real. You're right. This definitely needs to be after. So I can, yeah, save it. Yeah. The tension, that. the tension on some of them will destroy you. So you need to <laughs> go to it before the interview. Be all wound up. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, good point. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, that sounds like quite a lot to do on my list. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be all right. Well, uh, I think we'll need to, uh, my throat is about to give out full, full, full force. Uh, and without me just hacking into the microphone the rest of this time, uh, I might need to. <coughs> I think that that's all my throat has right now. All right. Sounds oh. good. Well, <laughs> it was like, oh, I think it's kind of fine. And then it was not good. Really, we need. <laughs> and all of a sudden it's like everything is fine until it wasn't right like it's a- <laughs> so we will we will end this uh, show as we began talking about my uh, all right love it, so. <laughs> yes <laughs> well uh, love you guys and uh, we'll do this again soon. all right love you too okay love, love you, you too <laughs> Bye.